The tourney at Tarran Hall, in my opinion, is one of, if not the most confusing events in the history of A Song of Ice and Fire. Mainly because we know so much about what happened there, but also so little. Every major plot point is given just enough credit so that we can infer what happened next, but not enough that we can be 100% sure. This teasing by George is ultimately the root of many theories. But today, we'll be diving into Rhaegar Targaryen and his involvement in both the tourney and the events that followed. The question being, what were Rhaegar's true intentions at the tourney of Harrenhal? The tourney was announced in 280 AC by Lord Walter Went, shortly after a visit from his brother, Sir Oswald Went of the Kingsguard, who had come from King's Landing. A great reward was offered to the victor, much more than Tywin offered in his tourney three years prior, and much more than House Went could probably afford. You see, Harren Hall, despite being in ruin, is one of the most expensive castles to maintain and repair because of the sheer scale of it. The cost of the tourney and the reward itself would have nearly crippled most houses, yet alone the cost associated with Harren Hall. So who else could have funded it? Although most believed House Went were just showing off their wealth and power, many would realise it that they lacked the funding for such an event and that instead there was a shadow host. Mesa Yandel suggests in the world of ice and fire that it was Rhaegar Targaryen. The tourney itself brought hundreds of challengers and the majority of the High Lords of Westeros into one place. It would be the perfect opportunity for Rhaegar to plot to depose his father and ascend the Iron Throne himself. King Aerys II was not expected to attend as he had not left the Red Keep in four years, following his half a year imprisonment in the defiance of Duskendale. However, these alleged plans were foiled by Lord Varys, who warned the king of Rhaegar's supposed plans to depose him until the Mad King himself arrived and announced, much to the behest of the guests, due to the king's clear decline in appearance. The one thing we do not know is if Varys had evidence of Rhaegar's plots or if he was just being precautious. Most likely he had heard whispers of what others thought and urged the king to attend to be better safe than sorry, or to sow dissent amongst the king's vassals. Knowing Varys, it's probably the latter. With that, the rebellion had failed before it had even began. Or had it? One rebellion had been stopped, but another would start to unfold. Although Rhaegar's alleged schemes for the tourney had failed, he also supposedly had other plans. From a young age, Rhaegar built an obsession with the prince that was promised prophecy. According to Sir Barristan Selmy, one day he found something in his scrolls that changed him, and he decided to become a knight, telling Sir William Darry, who was a master at arms of the Red Keep, I will require a sword and armour. It seems I must be a warrior. This sudden change in Rhaegar was probably brought on by Rhaegar reading the prophecy for the first time, for the prince that was promised would be a hero to deliver the world from darkness. Rhaegar might have interpreted this as leading the battle, thus causing his newfound intent to become a warrior. Maester Aemon solely believed that Rhaegar was the prince that was promised, and a young Rhaegar even agreed with him. Since Rhaegar was born beneath the smoke of the burning of Summer Hall and beneath the salt from the tears of those who died there, linking deeply to the prophecy. If you want to learn more about the prince that was promised prophecy, click the link in the top right of your screen to watch after. Later on, however, Rhaegar believed that his son Aegon was the promised prince. In one of the visions seen by Daenerys in the House of the Undying, Rhaegar is discussing with Elia what to name their son, stating he is the prince that was promised and his shall be the song of ice and fire. One part of the prophecy that Rhaegar seemed fixated on is the dragon having three heads. He interprets it as Rhaegar needing to have three children, two of which he has with Elia Martell, a princess of Dawn named Aegon and Rhaenys, after the conqueror and his wives. However, his wife Elia was too weak and too fragile to have another child, which Rhaegar desperately wanted, needed even. We can assume he would name them Visenya, after Aegon's other wife. So Rhaegar needed another child with another woman that would fit into the prophecy so that Aegon's shall be the song of ice and fire. As of now, everything is very much linked to the fire side, so Rhaegar needed ice, and who better than a Stark of Winterfell? More specifically, Lyanna Stark, the She-Wolf. It isn't clear on what Lyanna thought of Rhaegar, the only inclination we have is the fact that Lyanna cries over a beautiful song performed by the Crown Prince at the tourney of Harrenhal, for which Benjen mocks her for. When Rhaegar won the tourney, many assumed that he would crown Elia Martell as the queen of love and beauty, as she was his wife. Instead, however, Rhaegar rode right past his wife and placed the laurel of blue winter roses in the lap of Lyanna Stark. 
Liana's brother Brandon Stark believed it to be a slight to Liana's honour, and Robert Baratheon, Liana's betrothed, laughed at his actions, but those closer to Robert claimed that it was the start of a growing resentment of Rhaegar, one that would eventually kill him. As a side note, it's entirely possible that Lyanna Stark was the Knight of the Laughing Tree, a mysterious knight who fought in the tawny anonymously, beating all of their opponents, and then disappearing without a trace. Rhaegar had been sent out by the Mad King to find a mysterious knight, and it could be believed that's where Lyanna and Rhaegar met, and started a possible romance. It could explain why Rhaegar crowns Lyanna as the Queen of Love and Beauty. I will be covering the Knight of the Laughing Tree alongside Howland Reed and Ashara Dane theories from the tourney in another video. The next year, Lyanna came face to face with Rhaegar, ten leagues from Harrenhal, supposedly being in the Riverlands for her brother Brandon's wedding to Catelyn Stark, which sadly never happens. Here she was taken by Rhaegar with the help of Sir Arthur Dane and Sir Oswald Went of the Kingsguard. We don't know why she was near Harrenhal when she should have been safely at Riverrun but perhaps they had planned to meet there and run off together, knowing that neither of their families would allow their forbidden love. The events that followed inevitably lead to Robert's rebellion, the death of Rhaegar and end of the Targaryen dynasty. It's entirely possible Lyanna could have had a child with Rhaegar during the time the rebellion takes place, as it lasted a year, the entire time she was missing. This child could be Jon Snow, Mira Reed, or maybe someone else entirely meaning the three heads of the dragon could have been born as Rhaegar may have been right about the prince that was promised, and young Griff truly is Aegon, who will take the throne for himself and win the fight against the others. This all may be true, or perhaps the Wents could afford it, and Rhaegar had no plans to depose his father, nor to crown Lyanna as the queen of love and beauty. Perhaps Rhaegar was wrong about everything. After all, this is just a theory, and one you will undoubtedly find holes in. If you do, be sure to comment below and to tell me how stupid I am. Thank you for watching, and bye bye now.